Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be looking at this new, relatively new, tool inside of DaVinci Resolve that has a lot of potential and I'm really curious to check it out. This is kind of a, a first impression run through of this effect. Um, I'm not going to give like the most analytical deep dive, you know, super in-depth video. I'm literally just going to use the effect on some shots here. We're going to see how it looks. I'm going to play around with it, see how functional it is, and, and just come at it from kind of a brand new perspective just to see how easy is it to, to learn just jumping into it and how effective can it be. So let's get right into it. So I've brought up some shots from my film, The Doorway, and I'm going to do this uh, two ways. So I've seen people use this effect where they literally just use one singular node, and that's the setup that I've got going on right now. There's one node and I've got the film look creator already plugged in and that's all I'm going to use to get the effect. Now I've also got it with my normal node tree and I've got it applied towards the end of that. So basically we're going to do this a couple of ways where we use one, we use the effect as the entire method of color grading and then two is going to be basically adding it in as a as an effect on top of color grading that I've already done. So let's take a look at this simple one node just using the film creator and let's see what we can kind of do. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you use this effect is to input the color space of whatever camera you're using. So for me, this was shot on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro. And so I've got Blackmagic 9 film 4K Gen 3, Black and Design Film Gamma, and then I'm outputting to Rec. 709. Now, there are these presets that you can use to get like a, a look, a uh, film look, basically right off the bat. But for this video, I'm gonna use the custom one because we're gonna use this as the only node in the entire thing to color grade this one shot. So I wanna have as much flexibility as possible. I'm gonna start by bringing up the exposure a little bit because it's a little bit, a bit of a dark shot. Um, now the one nice thing is that it already applies as soon as you put it on, there's already, um, some grain on here. We can, we'll go and adjust that. There's grain, there's bloom, uh, there's halation, there's a vignette. All of those effects are already applied on, which is giving this very nice, like soft highlight, uh, which is giving this very like soft highlight look, um, from the bloom and the, the halation. Um, and I really like that. Um, I'm gonna increase the contrast here because I feel like it's very, very flat. Go probably somewhere around there. The highlights are honestly looking pretty good. I like how kind of pronounced they are. Um, skin by Sprite Fine, richness. It's gonna give us a little bit of saturation. I'm gonna bump that up a little bit. I like the, the very colorful look, especially for this uh, this shot where you've got this like, you know, really bright blue and the really bright orange. Adding a little bit of uh, richness, I think looks good. I mean, to be completely honest, right now where I have the shot, it looks good. Like this, I would totally use this as a final product. And this is a singular node, literally one node. It took me just inputting the color space, getting the white point, and then just a little bit of exposure adjustments. And I've got a look already. Um, if you look at the before and the after. Now, obviously a shot like this, the lighting is, is doing a lot here. Um, we've already got that split tone look, so it's really just making that pop, but it's doing a really good job. It's doing a really, really good job at that. And I, I am genuinely really, really liking what I'm able to get from this. The bloom, it's very subtle and I, and I like that. I like how subtle this is. We can obviously increase it and you can see it's it's giving a very subtle effect, which I, again, I ultimately really like. But I think I'm gonna keep it there. Uh, the halation. Um, yeah, again, it's very subtle. When you really crank it up, it, you can see it for sure. But if I just reset it to that default, I mean, it's really, I like how subtle all of the effects are when you're, uh, when you just, you know, apply it at the default because I'm not a huge like fan of super super heavy like effects on my footage um, and so with how subtle it is 
I just I just really like that. I really like how easy it is and how the default isn't overbearing and it's not too strong and it just gives you this subtle, subtle little extra extra little sauce on the footage. I really like that. Now the grain, you've got different grain presets. This is a 65 mil. Look at the 35. That's that's a little too strong. Again, <laughs> that's a little too strong for me. Obviously, as you go down, it's it's gonna get stronger. Um, but man, yeah, that 65 mil is almost like, I mean, it's noticeable. You can tell that it's there. And I, I, I'm probably not going to be able to tell with YouTube compression, but if I zoom in here, really, really zoom in, you can see that there is grain being added. But again, it's, it's so subtle. And what I like about that is, yes, there, yes, it's adding grain, but it's, it's so subtle that it's not really noticeable and it just adds just a little bit of texture to to the image and it also helps kind of hide some of that digital noise that's in there that's the one thing i will use foam grain for i don't i don't use it very often to be honest unless i'm going for like a very stylized look but if i'm just doing um you know my normal stuff even in my films i don't use a lot of foam grain but when you can have it at this you know 65 millimeter preset where it's very fine it very much blends into like the normal like digital noise that you get and i don't like i don't like the digital noise because it doesn't look that good um but when you combine it with the film grain it kind of blends the two together and it looks a lot better it's it's kind of one of those things where you're gonna have noise in the image by adding grain it makes that noise just look a little better. That was me just kind of looking through the effects, um, but as far as what I actually did, I mean, it was very, very simple. Again, color space, adjusted these color settings a little bit, and then didn't really touch anything else. Everything else is just default. Um, and so I was able to get that in, I mean, realistically, five minutes. So that's pretty good, um, and, I, and I really like that. Now, this is what I was able to do on my own using it as just kind of a uh, an effect on top of normal color grading um and and it's pretty close my shot is a little bit darker but i still think it looks looks good my biggest thing would be like yes just using this effect one note it's very convenient very fast but being able to use it on top of my footage because obviously like, i can i can bring this up i can I can bring up the exposure of the shot pretty easily, but by doing it on top of one of my node trees, I have all of the normal flexibility that I would get when color grading, and then the the film look creator literally just becomes an effect on top of my normal footage. This next shot, this is one that I was really excited to see because in this film, this shot is very, very important. And when I color graded originally, I felt like it didn't look exactly how I wanted it. But as soon as I added this effect, now this film came out before this effect was even a thing. So this wasn't like an option when I made the film, which is a, a bit unfortunate, but it really made the portal effect pop and look really, really good. If we disable it, this is the shot with just the effects applied to it. Um, and it looks good, but when we add on this, like that's, that's what I wanted it to look like. That's really what I wanted the effect to look like. And so adding this preset on top of that just looks so good. The fact that I was able to get this look with one node and it takes me five minutes, it's pretty crazy. Now, again, this, this all goes back to like the, the lighting of the scene, the composition of the scene, like everything around this scene is kind of what makes the color grading easy because it was set up, you know, to, to be this way. Um, now, this was the shot that I color graded myself um, and then added the effect on top of We see we're even getting a more pronounced glow, which is just even even cooler um and there's kind of this like fringe on him that just i think just looks super super cool and i love how this turns out i think it just looks a little bit better there's a little bit more of a soft 
roll off of the highlights. And again, you have this nice like fringe that looks really cool. Um, and then just, just the, kind of the flexibility of the overall color. Um, I don't know which note it's, it's probably it's HDR note right here. Um, I was able to kind of give it this cooler tint, which is something I did want. Um, and when you just apply this effect, you're really not getting that. So I think, again, there's, there's a lot of possibilities with this effect where you can add it just as the one node that you use to color grade the whole shot, or you can add it in combination with stuff that, you know, your normal color grading process and get some of those, some of these cool effects on your footage. Okay. Last shot here. So this one, I'm gonna kind of follow that same idea. This one's a little interesting. This is where like, I do wish, I wish in here, I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal because again, there's already so much other stuff you can do, but you just really have the exposure and the contrast that you can adjust here. And I would love to be able to more fine tune the color grade. Um, but again, that's why I, I do the two methods where you can, you can either, if you need something quick, you can just one node add it on, or I'll show you in a second what you can do, you know, when you just actually color grade it and then add it on kind of as just like a last little finishing touch effect to the footage. But overall, this is looking really, really good. This is the unedited shot. And then this is just the one node, just input the color space, a little bit of an exposure adjustment. Again, it's like five minutes of, of color grading. So this is just super nice if you're someone who, you know, isn't like wants to get really good looks with your footage, but doesn't fully, you know, know a ton about color grading um, and just wants like a quick and, and easy, you know, film look or just a quick look just in general. But the thing that I like about this effect is that again, you can also add it to your own footage and customize it even more to get a look that you want. So if we look at this, I mean, this is with my color grading, I've added a lot of saturation into this because in the film, I wanted it to look very you know, bright, very vibrant. And so then the film look tones it down a little bit. And I think just, just adds again, just a little bit of a finishing touch to the footage that I really like. And I think looks, looks really, really good. Um, you know, when we look at with just the film look, uh, there's not as much saturation. We can we'd obviously, um, where is it? Go to the richness, bump that up a little bit. Although obviously as you see here, when we add the richness, it's really, you know, hitting on the, the lightsaber here, but not so much on his face. Whereas in this shot, I was able to get a lot of that. If you look at my saturation node here, uh, I was able to adjust this, affect the saturation kind of across the whole image. Um, it's still going to get a lot on the lightsaber, but uh, a little bit more on the face, a little bit more on the, the rest of the image than with just the effect. I think, again, just has like a nice little finishing touch. This effect works really well because if we look at it like this is just all the color grading that I did. Um, and I think with this effect, too, it, it looks good. But when you add on that bloom and that halation, it really just softens the effect, which just looks so, so good. And I think just, oh, just, it's, it's just perfect. It, it looks really, really good. And, and this is one where like, I really wish this effect was out when I was making this film because it, it looks genuinely better. Like this, adding this effect to this footage makes it look closer to my original vision. And it just looks so, so good that like there's part of the ones to like go back and like redo it and like redo the color grading and and use this effect and kind of have like a remastered version of that film um it would take way way too much work i'm not actually going to do that but um it is really cool to see this effect and just to think about the ways that i can use it in the future there's a lot to this effect there's probably a lot that i didn't cover there's probably a lot more that you can do with it but if you're really looking for kind of just a new cool way to add a little bit of flair to your footage. This is definitely something I would check out. Uh, I'm super happy with the results that I'm able to get from this. 
and I think it just looks really, really good and is a really exciting tool that uh, has been added to DaVinci. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.